It seems like determinism and free will is kind of a hot contentious topic here. I don't really see what the big deal is myself, but I do find it very interesting. I think one big problem with it is the definition of free will. People who reject the idea of free will, regardless of their position on determinism and indeterminism, seem to have one definition, while people who accept free will have a different one. The one thing all sides tend to agree upon is that they define free will differently. This consensus backs up my idea that these are two completely different things. They are defined differently, everyone agrees they are different, I see no reason they shouldn't be treated as different, and in fact, I think drawing this dichotomy cleans up much of the messiness inherent in this topic. I will define free will in the typical fashion where neither determinism nor indeterminism can give rise to it. I will be introducing other things that address the other sort of free will, one being our illusion of free will, and the other being a concept called control, which is an idea I got from Sisyphus Redeemed. I thought I should mention where I got that idea, as it came from someone who has a YouTube channel. So, let's start with determinism and indeterminism. From a philosophical perspective, determinism just means that events have causes. So, the argument for philosophical determinism is that everything obeys the laws of physics. From the Big Bang onwards, everything is determined and could be predicted. When I say could here, I mean that it is logically possible. Whether it is possible in actuality isn't part of this. So, we are in a deterministic universe in that way, and our minds think in terms of cause and effect, and not normally in randomness disconnected from causality. From a scientific perspective, we have indeterminism. Science is about whether it is possible to predict causes and effects. In certain general ways it is, and that is what science does. However, it simply isn't possible to know exactly what will happen tomorrow. If you could know where every single particle is in a given area, you could, in theory, extrapolate with the laws of physics and know what happens tomorrow. However, that simply isn't possible. The amount of information and speed at which it must be done would need to exceed the physical limitations of reality. So, our reality is philosophically deterministic and scientifically indeterministic meaning things are entirely determined in that they follow the laws of physics, and that it is impossible to predict enough cause-effect relationships to know the future. Obviously doing this on a small scale is what science is all about, so I'm not talking about that. Also, keep in mind the Heisenberg uncertainty principle does not change this. That's about information on the quantum level, so this only supports the indeterminism from a scientific perspective. Both philosophical determinism and scientific indeterminism give us a feeling of free will. We can think in terms of cause and effect, which gives us a cohesive reality, yet we have no ability to predict events or know what we will do before we think of it. The structure of our minds leads to this feeling of agency, too. We are aware of our own thoughts, and are aware of our sense of self, which is what gives rise to being conscious and feeling that we have free will. Another thing that leads to this illusion of free will is that our minds are part of the universe, so anything we want to do is determined by the reactions in our mental processes. While the laws of physics have something to do with it on one level, our mental processes do on another level. So, we are various causes that lead to various effects. Being completely intertwined with the deterministic nature of ourselves and of our reality make it impossible to separate the two. So, for all these reasons, we have a feeling of free will. Looking at the universe from outside, 
would let you see it as completely predetermined, but the perspective from the inside is that your own agency is determining things, and so it is, as it is part of this predetermined universe. This brings me to the issue of control, which addresses the compatibilist version of free will, which may better be called freedom to act. Freedom to act is more about how we perceive things, which is that we have a will of our own and can make choices. That is certainly part of the mind, even though actual free will is an illusion, the mind does have agency in this way. The arguments about free will seem to always be about implications. It always leads to discussions of fatalism. That's all seriously stupid because not making a choice is a choice in itself. This is another reason why I take the position that free will and our perceived agency are two completely different things. You also can't make a decision about what is true based on what set of implications you like better. What makes all the back and forth about that so utterly ridiculous is that there are no implications. That's right. There being no free will has absolutely no bearing on daily life. It is entirely meaningless in that regard. All that matters is our agency or freedom to act and what we can control. Control is about the actions we can do something about. For example, if you have a tumor in one part of your brain, you might have seizures which you would have no control over. A tumor in the amygdala might make you very paranoid and angry. This you would have no control over either. There is also the difference between injuring someone by jumping on them and injuring them by falling on them because you were pushed. In the first instance, you chose to do that, and in the other, you did not. There is also duress. With a gun to your head, you may have a very small amount of control, but not very much as your life depends on your compliance. So this concept is what actually has a bearing on daily life. We must also consider that people may have less control than you would think. The analogy Bertrand Russell used here was that when a person does something wrong, we say that a person is evil. However, if there is something wrong with a car, we don't curse that evil car. Instead, we try to find out what is wrong with it. Now, I don't want to get into morality, too. For one, it's a long, separate subject, and for two, I have a video on it already. I just want to point out that subtle deviation from norms in the brain may lead to behaviors we think of as evil, or having poor character whereas the person may have much less control over that behavior than people would typically think. I did a couple videos on law and justice that get into this sort of thing as well, if you're interested. One example can be a person with ADD. Such a person may have only partial control over behaviors like paying attention and organ organizational skills. A person with ADD can do things a different way and mitigate some of these problems, but it will never be the same as not having it. Expecting them to be able to just start acting normal, so to speak, is kind of like expecting a paraplegic person to start walking. They can mitigate their immobility by using a wheelchair, but they can't just get up and walk. In addition to brain problems, people can learn certain ideas via propaganda which can change thinking and behavior. So this is another area that can lead to a loss of control over some behaviors. Ignorance, of course, can be another factor which, although it doesn't directly limit control, it may cause someone to behave in a negatively viewed way due to lack of knowledge. Again, I don't want to get into morality or the limits of a person's liability versus lack of ability to control the underlying problem and the resulting need for pragmatic action. While related, it's a little outside this topic, 
and I've also addressed these things in other videos, which I will link below. The point of this section is just to highlight the limits of control as it relates to our freedom to act and our free agency. So, in summary, we live in a philosophically predetermined reality which is largely scientifically indeterminate. This leads to both our actual lack of free will as well as our illusion of having free will. In conjunction with the inner workings of our brains, and the resulting perceptions and agency to act. This resulting freedom to act is called free will by compatibilists, although it's not the same thing based on differing definitions, but is nevertheless a very real phenomenon. All implications of determinism and actual free will proposed by anyone ever is laughable nonsense with no bearing on practical daily life and, instead, the only thing that matters is what we can and can't control, and to what degree, with regard to our free agency. So, the bulk of this is purely academic, and only our degree of control of our freedom to act has any practical implications. These implications are as important as the previously mentioned ones are irrelevant. They do, or at least should, play a major role in the application of morality and justice. So, while the videos linked below are not related to this one, they go over concepts that do overlap the last section of it. 